Hello. This video is going to be about posting items to eBay from Walmart.com. I run a drop shipping business with the bulk mentality. So I post as many items as I can and I do zero kind of optimization whatsoever. Um, the idea is to spend as little time as possible while earning the best hourly rate that I can. Um, so here you can see that I have 48,000 items in my store that are in stock. All of these items, or the vast majority of them, were posted within the past two weeks. I only had 10,000 items three weeks ago. Um, so it's very feasible to do this. This took me about eight hours over the past two weeks in order to get to this point. It does not take very much time at all, and that's kind of the whole point of... Uh, of the, the business model that I'm working on is that bulk mentality where every time I do something I ask myself how do I do this a hundred times okay how do I do this 10,000 times because if I really want to make a lot of money like 48,000 is a lot of items but like I need like 300,000 400,000 items and like how do I populate that 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 many items how do I find them and I haven't learned what I'm gonna do for that scale but for now I have a system um, and I use Hydrolister to post items because when you use Hydrolister, all you need is the item's URL, as long as you're using a source that works with Hydrolister. So that means that if you can find lists of URLs, you can dramatically decrease the amount of time you spend posting items. Granted, this has the full or the downside that you cannot optimize your items unless you go into them individually, which is not something that's feasible. Basically, I do zero work with individual listings unless it has something to do with a trademark violation. I always work with thousands of listings at a time. So I use Hydrolister coupled with SkuGrid and then I use two free Chrome extensions. One is called Session Buddy, which is this one here. So if you pause the video and add this to Chrome then you can follow along. Or you can just watch it, it doesn't really matter. And then we also use Link Grabber. So Session Buddy is, you'll, you'll see what, this is a bit harder to explain. It's actually used for something else, but it has a kind of side feature that lets me speed up the process a bit. Link Grabber is the one that's more easy to comprehend. Uh, what this does, it looks at the web page you're looking at, and it finds every single link. So imagine that you've searched for something on your source, or in my case, walmart.com, and I search for a keyword, and then it's showing a bunch of items. I can just pull every item that it's showing in a list using this software. So this really speeds the process up. Um, okay, so have I gone over, showed you my items, showed you the tools I use. So let's get started. Um, I'm going to do a little one just to illustrate the concept that I'm talking about because I would normally use, I would normally do like tons and tons of tabs, but that's going to screw this video up and you guys don't want to watch that most likely. So this is the way you're going to think about it. You need to find a URL that is equal to 1,000 items. And it's just like finding one item. You, you, you can think all you want about what you're gonna post, but in reality, it's a waste of time. You have to post items and see what sells. And as long as you make sure that what you're posting has variety to it, it's not all like 100 pages of car axles, it's different things, then you're gonna do well. So we're going to use a really simple keyword. Um, let's go with brown. I like using colors because if you specify a color, you rarely have variations because it'll pick the link to that item of that color instead of the link to the variation. So when this sells, it'll show them the pictures usually for the brown version and it'll look to see if the brown version is in stock. Whereas if I use, if say I said, sold something like this and I didn't have that color, it might just link here and the color that is shown is out of stock, it causes issues. Um, and so you guys can change this however you want. I'm just going to show you what my process is. I never sell items that are not sold by walmart.com. That is because walmart.com offers free shipping and they can ship things very quickly. Most of the other sellers of items on walmart.com are actually just drop shippers. So they're just buying stuff from Walmart and selling it to you or buying it from somewhere else and it's a higher price and it takes longer and tracking's worse and returns are a bitch. So always use walmart.com only, okay? And then you're going to have to specify a price range. Um, my price range is always $10 to $49. So I won't sell something that costs me less than $10 
and I won't sell something anymore, at least. It cost me more than $49. And the reason that I do $49 is because Walmart offers free shipping after $50. Bucks. And the way that my pricing works with Hydrolister, if I post an item for less than $50, bucks, it properly gets priced. It looks at, say it's a $30 item, and it costs $7 to ship. That means Hydrolister is going to be like, okay, 30 plus 7 is 37, and then it's going to apply my price multiplier to $37, not $30. So then I'll make more profit. Whereas the second it hits free shipping, Hydra just assumes that I'm going to use the free shipping, and it gives me the base cost of the item. So say that an item is $54 or $50, right? And that's free shipping. That means it'll multiply the, uh, it'll get, it'll post it based on the $50 price, even though I'm actually going to pay $7 for shipping. So I, I don't make as much money over 50 bucks, but that's just because of how my pricing model works. And it's also, it's advantageous to use a smaller sale price because you want more sales of less price per item, but more profit per item. Like say that I post a 10 or a $20 uh, item, I'm actually going to sell it for like 30, 40 bucks. So that's like almost a 2.0 multiplier. Um, so I'm still going to earn money. Um, but the thing is, if you're having a lot of big sales, like one, two, three, four hundred dollar sales, if anything goes wrong with that sale, that seriously screws up your cash flow. And there are going to be times that you have problems. If you ship overseas, say that you ship an item and it's defective from Walmart, it's not your fault, you have no way to avoid that, and then it shows up and it's going to New Zealand and it costs $200, it costs you $200 to send the item back. So you just have to fully refund them. That's a pretty big loss. But if it was just a $20 item, that's not really that big of a deal, or even like a $50, $60 item. That's not bad. So you want to keep your price low and get more sales. People are also more likely to buy items that have lower prices, so that's good. Uh, but now we're going to look through this search result. So I typed in brown. I see we have 30,000 items. Um, each link that we pull is going to give us a thousand items um, and that's going to get put into Hydra and not all of those items are going to go through. So you'll actually post between 500 and like 750 items. It varies. Um, and so the way to check if it's good is to look at the variety of the items. You want to be posting as many different kinds of items as possible. So this looks good. I mean, obviously everything's brown, but we have like paper stuff. We have pet supplies here. We have um, a bed thing. That's going to be an issue because it's sizes, but that's just part of this business model, unfortunately. We've got some books. That's okay. We don't want like whole pages of books which is really common, like you'll get into a search result, you think you found 50 pages of items, and like 42 of them are books. You don't want those kind of results. You want things that are different, like here's some watches, there's going to be a lot of watches, well, there's tons of watches for some reason. Boots, more different kinds of things, let's go, we're on page 6, let's do page like 42. Still different kinds of things, pet supplies, Funko stuff, toys, markers, this is a really good one. I'm happy with this. So now that you've seen a good one, let me show you a bad one. Um, what would be a bad one? I don't know. Let's go with... Uh, uh, ooh, 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 ooh. Um, cover. Oh, I was hoping it would give me a bunch of books. Okay, so this is a bunch of grill covers so far. If we keep going. Still a bunch of grill covers. There's a lot of grill covers. Page 34. I should have figured this out before posting the video. Still grill covers. Well, this is kind of, it's not as bad as I thought, but see, this is an example of something you don't really want 50 pages of grill covers. You want to use a word that can describe a lot of different kinds of items and then use that. So instead of using words, what you can also do is use um, items that you've sold. Um, I like this because you want to randomize your posting process as much as possible. You don't want to really be thinking about it too much. You just want to be constantly posting a variety of as many different kinds of items as possible. So another way to do that is to paste the full title of items that you sell. And it generally, if it's a longer title with a lot of different keywords in it, it works really, really well. This one's pretty specific, so I'm just using it as an example. Um, and we're going to do our filtering, so walmart.com, 
And then our 10, where's the price? Uh, they always change the location of the fields depending on the search. If you're really lucky, you get a 40 item search, which makes it twice as fast. It's usually 20 though. So we go here, look, it's a bunch of covers and bins and that kind of thing. And usually you'd think that, oh, it's going to show me, I'm searching for the item that I already sold. I already have this posted. Well, yeah, on the you have that one item, but this is a list of like up to a thousand items. So even if you only get like four or five hundred of them, that's still really good. And you'll notice that the first couple pages are usually really similar to the item that you sold. And then once you get past like the first couple, then it's usually way different. So if we go to like 34... There's yeah, still boxes, but you see there's hangers, all this kind of stuff. There's some variety here, and this is this is a good one. You want you want variety, and you don't want the same exact kind of item. It's okay to have like four or five pages of the same item, but not if that whole search result is like, you know, one or two different kinds of items. Again, it really depends on your account limits. If you can post like two million items, who gives a crap, right? But okay, so you've seen. I've talked to you a little bit about what makes a good search and what makes a bad search. And I still haven't really cleared up this concept of how we're how we're pulling items. Um, so this is mostly just educational, not really. Yeah, anyway, I'm babbling. So this is the one we want to do. So say we found our search result and we want to take a thousand items from the search result. So what we're going to do is go to any page except page one. Well, any page between two and nine, ideally. Right? Okay, so we're going to go to page two. And the reason we do that is because this right here. See how it says page two? If you look at page one, it doesn't have that section. So what we're going to do, but at the same time, you can just do this. Type in page one, and then it'll go to page one. So it still works. It just doesn't show you that. Okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to make a list of all 50 pages. Because you don't want to have to click on all of these. Like... Like open a new tab and two and three and do that 50 times, that's going to take forever. So this is where Session Buddy comes in. This is the Session Buddy interface, right? So we're going to go over here on this little cog right here and click Import. And then we just paste once, twice, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, I did 11. Okay. And remember, this search result was 50 pages. We go one. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, okay? And then do this part. See, we're doing this. Instead of having to open all these tabs, clicking on them one by one, we're going to make this master kind of list and then open all of them at once. And it might screw up my audio. Um, so I'm actually I'm making a 50-page list just to show you how to do it, but I'm actually only going to open a tenth of this list just for the purposes of this video and that'll make the process a little bit shorter so normally you would do this and then you would click save and then you would open it and it would open all of these URLs but for the purpose of this video we're only going to open the first 10 pages there we go so click save and then usually what I would do is I would save this with the keyword that it is C Brown so if you go down here, obviously I don't always do that, but I've been deleting them, that's right. Yeah, anyway, it doesn't matter. We're going to open this, and it's going to take a minute to load. And again, this is like, yeah, I'm frozen right now, I can see it. Am I back? Oh. Am I back? I think I'm back. Hopefully that didn't put everything out of sync. Yeah, that was only 10 items. Imagine if I'd done 50. Whew. Obviously, you need a kind of better computer to do more of them, but, you know, if you're trying to make a business out of this, it's worth the investment. Because um, so there's a lot of times where, like, you can't do the bulk mentality unless you're opening, like, tons and tons of tabs and working on multiple things at once. So now we have our list of the, the, the 10 pages, and normally this would be the 50 pages of the search result. Um, and one thing to note is we did a search that has 30,000 results, but Walmart will actually only show us 1,000 results at a time. They will never show you past page 50. So you can work around that by doing specific price ranges. So say instead of just doing 10 to 49, I had multiple links. One was 10 to 20, one was 20 to 30, et cetera, et cetera. And then you can, you can get more of these results to show up. But for each import process it's basically 1000 items per link okay so next we're going to use url grabber which is the second 
um, Chrome extension that I showed you earlier and some keystrokes. The keystrokes we need to learn are control tab. OK, so I'm clicking control tab and it takes you to the next tab in your current window. It's very, very useful. You can also press control shift tab to go back one tab. See, now I'm going back. All right. This is going to save us a lot of time. And the other other the other shortcut we're going to use is control W. And what that does is it closes the current tab that you're looking at. And I'll show you how I'm going to use that in a second. And then we're going to type some stuff as well. So first, we're going to open Link Grabber on all of these pages. And again, Link Grabber is going to go through and it's going to pull all of the links that exist on this web page, right? So we click Link Grabber, wait for it to load, control tab to the next tab. And then we do it again, control tab, and again, control tab. And whenever you do this, wait for Link Grabber to load before you go forward. Otherwise, you'll get an error. Like I tried to make it there, did I? No, I didn't get an error. It'll say um, session expired. Um, it's, it happens more often when you're just going through like like this. You're going too fast for your computer to notice what's happening. Okay, so we did our first pass, and now we have 20 tabs. We have our 10 tabs of Walmart links, and then we have our 10 tabs of every URL on that Walmart link. Okay, so now what we're going to do is start at the beginning and do the second pass. And the second pass works by doing Control W and then typing IP or dash forward slash, backslash, whatever slash that is, IP slash. And then we're going to copy it. And now we do Control Tab, Control W, paste. Control Tab, Control W, paste. And then we just cycle through this whole list like this. Normally I would do this part faster, but I'm trying to slow it down just for you guys. See, that didn't take very long at all. And we can easily do that through like 50 pages. It's just like a couple keystrokes. Um, so now we have our list. We have our 10 pages, and the first 20 items on each page is just pullable like that, right? So now all we have to do is put this into HydroLister, okay? Um, I usually use two monitors. I'm going to use one just to show you guys what I'm doing, because I have a monitor right there, right? So normally I would have this link thing open and then Hydra open over there, but you can't see more than one monitor at once, so... All right, we're at the main Hydra page, and here we go. We're going to take all of these, paste them, and then tab, 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 enter. And then click here, control tab to the next tab, and then just repeat, repeat the process. Again, we're doing paste, tab, 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 enter. And then here, and then copy, and then we just keep going. This is the most time consuming part, and there are ways to make this part faster. I haven't figured any out yet. You can use macros, you can use other software. There's there's definitely ways to move this forward. Because um, this is great for like, you know, probably up to about 100,000 items. But once you're working with two, three, four hundred thousand, 400,000, I'm not sure that this will be feasible anymore. Cool. So we just queued um, 20 times 10. We just queued 200 items into HydroLester. Obviously, normally I would work with a, a way more links at once. Um, but for the purposes of this video, I just want to show you how I do this. And like I said, I was able to post, let's see, I started off with 10,000 and now I have 48,000. So I was able to post 38,000 items in less than six hours. It's really, really fast. And I'm already getting results from those sales. This is definitely something that works. Um, granted, you could theoretically post like 10, 20,000 items and they all be shit items and nothing sells. As long as you make sure that you have a lot of variety in your items, that's not going to happen. Um, and you really have to kind of get over the concept of like, what if I can't pay the PayPal bill? What if I can't? And, and you, you have to stop doubting yourself and just have faith and just throw yourself at it. And hopefully it works. I mean, I guess it's possible that it won't, but it seems to be working for me. So, okay. I hope that I addressed a lot of things there and I hope that this re video uh, goes well. It's a little bit long, but that's okay. Hope it was educational. Thank you.